We're the, the small estate with the biggest name. It's the state of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations. You know, that expression of six degrees of separation. In Rhode Island, there's this sort of inside joke of it. It's like two degrees. <laughs> Is Rhode Island small? I, did, I wasn't aware of We're the smallest state of the union, and uh, if you sneeze driving through here, you may miss it. <laughs> There's a huge effort here in this state to preserve what is left of the farms. The Watson Farm is a pretty special place. It's been preserved in, in perpetuity by the owner, Tom Carr Watson. This farm had been in his family for five generations, and he decided to bequeath this property to historic New England with the stipulation that it always be maintained as a working farm. And we've been here since then, since 1980, running the farm in the most sustainable manner possible, but also providing public access and programs in order to reconnect people to the land. So what, what's so going on? Is this a, like a Cirque du Soleil routine or something going on? This is actually breeding happening as we speak here. Yeah, maybe he doesn't quite get the, get the routine. He's like, I just stand on it, right? The farm bill really needs to be looked at. It's not just about those industrial models of agriculture. We need to keep more farmers on the land. We need to find ways of training young people to be able to be on the land, to learn the skills necessary. As our fuel shortages increase, I think that developing an infrastructure of local food production is very important. <laughs> Harder than it looks, eh? This farm is rooted in colonial history. All these pastures and fields have been farmed for well over 300 years. And this, as you circle around the island, you'll see a lot of history here. What we're trying to do is maintain that history, but move forward and be viable. Uh, we formed a co-op called Rhodey Fresh, the Rhode Island Dairy Farms Cooperative. And so far, we've been quite successful. The people of Rhode Island are willing to pay a few pennies more for a local product and something that will help keep the open space here in the state. So there is definitely an interest in uh, sustainability. When you have these big farms, the cows never see grass. They never see dirt in a lot of cases. They're on cement all their life. If I had to do that, I wouldn't farm. You know these cows by name? Yes. What they is? Are, they all have a name. Like this one here, what's the name of that one? Uh, you can tell her from the spot on her forehead. We call her Spot. Oh, cool. <laughs> right here, this is the state of Rhode Island. Because this is a oh, Rhode Island product. Oh, this is the state of Rhode Island. Right. Look at that. It's Rhodey Fresh time. That's Farm Fresh. We're at Paradise Farm Alpacas in West Kingston, Rhode Island. They have teeth on the bottom and then like a little gummy pad on top. And this is why we call them a sustainable livestock because they don't pull the grass out of the ground, they clip it. They actually put that pad down, press it against the ground, and the bottom teeth come up and clip that grass right at the base. So you ne you're never killing your paddock. They also don't have hooves, they have foot pads. And the foot pads are gentler on the earth than hooves. We do what's called the spit test. What we test for is pregnancy. If we bring a male in and she absolutely spits all over him, then we know she's bred. Oh, she just did it. Oh, she just did it. Okay. Oh! That was a loogie right there. Yeah. <laughs> that was a loogie. Like a bad prom. Hey, would you like to dance? Yeah. Oh, oh no! no I she got you! Alpaca spit. It's rumen mixed with um, grass. Whew. Yeah, definitely old old dental floss. There's no landline in alpaca. Oh, you can spin it right off of the animal. What a mess. I know. The poor Good. alpaca. Well, I, I I'm, I'm wasting it. That's off. okay. Annie uh -huh. is the little beige one that you saw outside. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then Nasha um, is the darker one. Mm -hmm. And I love that because it's got personality. Right now, we have to send it to a mill out of state because there's no mill in Rhode Island that will do it. And I'd like to keep our local economy going, and I'd like to keep it in state. Most of the Rhode Island farms are interested in co-oping and opening a mill in five years. That's kind of the goal that we're, we're heading for. Can you tell me your name? What's going on over there? I'm here on the giant pile of silage that feeds the cows, also known as the world's most confusing obstacle course. You don't want to talk about it? You're a little embarrassed? Because all you did was stand on her back? The micron is terrible on this. Yeah. I would not <laughs> spin this, Tom, if I were you. No, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a bay black. I'll give you a dollar if you stick your tongue in there, Jules. <laughs> I'll give you a dollar if you... <laughs> Any final words for America? Ah, uh, yes. She says, buy local.
Ah! Oh my god! Ah! 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 You didn't tell me about the monster in the corn salad. 